Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Horror Hour, where we debate, discuss, and disagree on all things horror. I am one of your co-hosts, Nick. We have our other co-host, David. David, yeah. Um, and David, who are we joined by today? Oh, this man has brought us... The, okay, so let us let me just paint the picture real quick. <laughs> it's a really cold night in Denver. We had just walked out of Mean Girls because we were just a little bit... um, Yeah. Anyways, and so we were just a little bit upset. We were a little bit like over it and all that stuff. And then we're like, well, we get home and we're like, okay, well, what should we watch now? You know, we don't know what to watch. Should we watch Slother House? And I was like, yeah, we've had it on our list for a while. And it was like, okay, fine, let's watch it. It changed. I, I'm not being, I'm not exaggerating when I say like I hadn't had this much fun watching a movie in a very long time. But not only that, invested and had so much fun watching this movie. And oh my God, like it's just, I, I have no words for that. This man just brought me probably the best movie that I've seen in the last decade. And his name is yes. Matthew Goodhue. Thank you so much for coming. The director of Slaughterhouse. I mean, oh my goodness. Such kind words. Thank you for having me. This oh, is great. I'm so we, glad. Yeah. It's, it, I like that. It was like a palate cleanser for a movie that maybe didn't. Yeah. And we, well, and I've never worked for a movie, you. <laughs> so he has, but I've never, and it was just like, I needed something to bring me back to just let's have a good time. And Slaughterhouse if anybody has, has been like, eh, it looks ridiculous. And yeah, it is it is ridiculous, but it's ridiculous in the best way possible, where you just, you're so much fun. You get so invested in the characters and it's just, you just have to laugh the whole time. Like you just can't take it too seriously or anything like that. So. I'm so <laughs> glad to hear that. I mean, that from the start, from the moment, like I was approached with the story, like that was the goal. It was like, we are trying to make, we're not, looking to make a film we're looking to make a movie that's fun and people you know want to watch it with their friends and laugh at it and laugh with it and it, it, we just found there's sort of a lack of these fun uh especially you know kind of gateway horror movies uh happening right now so we right, right. we tried our best <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean and any anybody that sort of knows me and david and watches the horror hour kind of knows <clears throat> kind of knows that our movie the, the type of movies that we gravitate towards are to put things in perspective like some of our favorite movies of the last couple of years we have zombievers we got winnie the pooh blood and honey we recently were completely entranced with the mean one oh um so yeah. slaughterhouse was was on the agenda to watch for quite a while oh, and nice. just uh one of the things that i always tell david is with when it comes to these sort of types of movies i think what is very very important is when you can tell that the people making it know what kind of movie they're making and genuinely have fun with it and that's, I mean, multiple points in which when we were watching it, we turned to each other and said that they were like, they knew, they knew what they were making <laughs> and they yeah. sold the hell out of it. Oh, yeah. um, but I have to know, is Alpha really dead? I mean, who do you think the sloth is at the, uh, at, at the, the very, end. very end? Yeah. I did. I couldn't tell if that was a different sloth from the same family. Or I was like, how did he get back? Or she get back there? We we spoke about that a lot. We were like, do we give Alpha like a scar or something that it's like, you know, able to really uh, just, you know, kind of point her out. Um, we wanted to keep it a little open ended, but I will say, you know, we we want Alpha to be in many films uh, after this one so yeah if i had to say i think elsa's <laughs> yeah. heart well, she's our diana me. ross there can only be one so let's you know we gotta <laughs> make course. sure yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. but yeah oh no, yeah I mean, we we wanted yeah alpha to be you know alpha was is our main character from the we were like that is the that's uh you know I'm trying to think of who we compared. Like that's our Selma Hayek or something. Like that was oh, the yeah. one on yeah. set that was like Alpha's in the room. Everybody behave. Yeah, <laughs> she, respectful. She, she's kind of like a little Betty White. Yeah, she's where Completely. he walks in the room. It's just like you just can't help but just like love it, even though it's like the wildest things that come out. <laughs> and it that... may may take a little bit longer to film with her. Like you know, right. you to... <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, no. We so I I will say I I know we all hope and you know would love to be able to make another one so the the hope is that alpha would definitely get to come back so if there's a part of your approach with a part two you'd be down oh yeah 
Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know, know I know the writers. Kate, uh, Brad Fowler is he he wrote the screenplay with uh, Katie Lanigan, and they produced it as well. And I know like they, Brad has many ideas. Um, some I've kind of heard and are really fun. So I I hope I hope it can happen. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Did you did at any point did you ever actually have a, like a real sloth on set or was it always just like the animatronic puppet? We we definitely spoke about that. Um I you know, I had never worked with puppets before, so I was like pretty terrified at just like how how to do it on a technical level, how much it would slow us down and knowing that you know, we didn't have a very big budget, so the, these projects you have to like move really fast and if you're ar if you're already needing to move really fast and then on top of it you're putting a puppet on camera who requires you know five people around her to operate and then we have two people off camera with a, a rc control operating its head like it it takes a long time to choreograph like little moments so i was I was a little freaked out about that. So we did discuss possibly having a real sloth for, you know, mainly like medium wide shots where, you know, it isn't super, super featured, but just to, um, you know, give, give life to the puppet. And to be honest, we went to a sanctuary and we, we met some sloths and like, they don't do anything. <laughs> so like we like we went and watched them and they just they were just like tucked in their little little corner and looked super peaceful. Uh, we saw them eat, which also was very slow, but they they didn't like do enough to kind of warrant having them on set. Then it, it's also sort of a thing, you know, um, where animal lovers so it's like if you can avoid putting an animal on set with all the lights and the camera and the people it's like it's it's better for everybody um because we don't want to freak freak him or her out so right. we sort of you know those combinations we were like let's just you know commit to the puppet and um and you know find a way to to make it come to life I think that also adds to the charm of it that it was like practical effects too. Because yeah. yeah, well, you fall in love with oh my god, so you, you look at it and you just fall in love with it immediately, and it's just like seeing the little things that they, that she does and all that stuff. It's like, which I feel like adds to it because if, I feel like everything is like CGI now, so everything is just like there's you can clearly tell. But having that little charm that especially for me because I just grew up being obsessed with like eighty slasher films and eighty, oh, so yeah. everything with practical effects and everything like that adds to it. And then by the end, even when you're seeing her do the wildest stuff, you're like. But she's so cute, and this is like you just can't help but love everything that she does, even even if she's in the hospital ready to kill somebody with a pillow and just you know. That's <laughs> Completely, a good yeah. No, I think you know I from the start when I uh, was approached with the story, like they, Brad and Katie were like, we want to do this with a puppet. We want it to be practical. We're you know we're looking at Gremlins. We're looking at um, the Child's Play. We're looking at those right. movies that kind of got us excited about horror to begin with. So to be honest, like if this was a CG sloth and we had to film with characters like holding a green bag that we would remove in post-production, like I don't think I would have even wanted to do the movie. Yeah. Um, like that is, you know, what I think got a lot of people excited um, for the project. A ton of people on set like hadn't gotten to work with a puppet before or work with puppeteers. So it was really fun to, you know, we had a really awesome crew. Uh, we shot out in Belgrade, Serbia, which I never thought I would go to Serbia <laughs> shoot a movie, but the crew was amazing and like true like artists in their crafts. And it was just amazing to watch these men and women like really um, put so much hard work and attention into lighting and shaping a scene. And then, you know, you bring your your little puppet in and they're like adjusting the light so it hits the back of her hair perfectly and it was just like a really fun combination of you know like super talented filmmakers really talented puppeteers um you know coming together to try to make this really goofy ridiculous thing as best 
as we can make it. You know, I, 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 I know some people are like a movie like this, like should be kind of shitty and should feel like this or like that. And for us, it was like, we wanted to make this feel like a big movie. Um, like we looked at Mean Girls, the the first one, and we're like, we want it to feel like that's a big studio movie. Like we wanted it to feel kind of big and bright, and you know, obviously, you, you try to make a movie bigger, feel a little bit bigger than than maybe what you have like monetarily. But um, yeah, that that was that was the hope. So yeah, the the practical effects, like I I love that stuff as well. I think it totally, you know. Uh, affects the experience for the audience and also like the actors you know they're able to be in a scene with an actual other character um our puppeteers like in between takes even when we're not filming they would be like operating alpha and her head would be moving around like it it was as if it you know we tried to make her as much of a character on set you know as anybody else so it was a really awesome learning experience and i hope to be working more with puppeteers and just practical effects in general in the future because that stuff is it's it's a blast and i think uh, the people you know i think people do notice like you can feel it when you're watching the movie and that is important oh yeah i mean there was multiple times in which i said to him that i was blown away by how high the production value looked because i mean Slaughterhouse, you hear a name like that and you don't necessarily, like, like you were saying, like you think it's going to be a little bit more low budget looking. I mean, as much as we loved the mean one, like yeah. you could tell that, you know, what they were kind of working with. And I was, I was blown away with this. It, it took me a while to even realize that it wasn't a real sloth. That's so um, interesting. I've heard some people say that. And I'm like, really? Like, I think because we obviously, we know. So it was like, right. and I, I don't know, a part of me was like, I don't think we'll ever... You know, it's a puppet. So I was like, I don't think we'll ever really have the audience think this is a is a real living, breathing thing. But if our actors and characters in the movie treat Alpha as such, right? I, I have to hope that combination will bring bring Alpha to life. So I'm I'm thrilled to hear you say that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, it was up until like, you know, Alpha's driving a car yeah, I think <laughs> and that's... like surfing the Internet and stuff like that. That's, that was okay. yeah. that's not real. I think they, they call that jumping the shark. Uh, <laughs> it's like, yeah, OK, I think we understand where we are now. <laughs> well, I have to ask a serious question since you mentioned like all the movies, the iconic characters. What was the horror movie that introduced you to the genre? Like what was one that you were like, oh, this is like amazing. <laughs> I so it's funny. I grew up. I have older brothers, all boys. Um, like I, I didn't see a lot of the '80s stuff until like a little bit later. Like my my older brothers, they weren't into like Jason or Freddy or Child's Play or any of that. Like my my mom was really into thrillers and horrors, and I remember seeing Silence of the Lambs like very young like very young and gotcha. really loving the feeling of being scared right um is that a horror movie some people may say no it's maybe more of a thriller or something but like that to me is is an incredible horror movie um and, and if a man like that puts me in a hole it's a horror yeah, movie. That's a horror movie. Yeah, it's a horror movie. I very much yeah. I remember like seeing the VHS cover before anything, just like the face with the moth on its mouth right. and just being like, what the fuck is this thing? Like, oh my God. So I that was one of the early ones. And then I because of my brother, I remember also seeing the first scream. Mm -hmm. Um and that like I saw Scream before I saw Halloween or um you know, Friday the 13th, any of that stuff. Right. And that freaked me out because, you know, instead of it being a monster or this sort of like otherworldly villain, it's like, right. you, it's the kids you go to school with. Like that scared me so right. much. <laughs> like who do um, I trust? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, oh, I just remember seeing that movie uh, and that opening sequence with Drew Barrymore and just being like, so scared, like <laughs> so scared. Just it just felt so real, and you know they yeah. talk, and I think in that scene they mention 
Halloween and a bunch of right. other horror movies. And it, it's kind of crazy. I'm sure it's same today. It's like, even if you're, if you're a little kid and you've never seen those movies, you probably know who Jason is, who Freddie right. is, who Chucky yeah. is. Um, so I, I think I like, I heard the references. I sort of had names to faces type of thing, but definitely didn't see those movies until a little bit later. Um, I wish I saw them when I was younger because I think they would have scared me like a little more. Right. <laughs> than, you know, my relationship with them, like I was never super scared of Freddy Krueger, but I love hearing people who like that, like traumatized them for yeah. <laughs> for many years. Well, Silence of the Lamb will traumatize anybody. I mean, oh my <laughs> gosh, it's, dude. It's, and I, that's a movie I try to, maybe once a year every other year go back and watch and it's just like man it's so it's so good well i was, I was actually talking to nick about this a couple like not too long ago about the scene inside of the lamb where she she's helping him into the van with the furniture that scene to me is pro one of the scariest is because it's not even like a gory or nothing crazy happens but the thought of just like somebody out there looking at you waiting for you like oh, it and just like, made, yeah it's <laughs> And you would like, you would probably help the guy. Like we all right, probably right. would, or at least consider it. And I mean, my, yeah, it's funny you say that my mom, like, I remember that was a, like, I don't know if her favorite scene is the right way to describe it, but like, right. she always spoke about that scene and like uh, American girl, the song she's lit the, the uh, Tom Petty song she's listening to like right before then my mom right, right. said like, she could never listen to that song ever again. <laughs> Cause she just. She would think like, oh man, she's gonna get abducted. But yeah, so it, it, there's so many iconic scenes in that. It, that's funny. Mm -hmm. That makes me think because um, uh, my mom was very big into horror movies when I was a kid, and like her favorites were Halloween and Scream. And I always, so cool. uh, whenever <laughs> somebody asked me like, what's what's the first horror movie you ever saw? And I was like, I'm fairly certain that like I was listening to the theme from Halloween <laughs> while I was still in utero. Um, yep. But I was five or six years old, I saw the first Scream movie in theaters opening weekend. I've seen every oh single my one. God. And I just I bet people were looking at your mom just oh, shaking yeah. their head. Oh, they were like giving that. her the side eye. And she was like, he's fine, he's fine. <laughs> yeah, he'll be all right, he'll be all right. <laughs> but I, I remember in that opening scene with Drew, everybody always focuses on the, you know, what's your favorite scary movie? And this line of dialogue left such an impression on me when, why do you want to know my name? Because I want to know who I'm looking at. That to me, the word curtains were instilled yeah. in my head from that point. I, yeah. I, because other than like doing the horror hour, like both David and I, we have reaction channels and it's yeah. usually horror movies. And every movie that we're watching, I'm like, curtains, y'all don't have any curtains in your house. This is why people get to you. It's crazy oh. to me. <laughs> right. You got to have curtains, man. Like, or blind something. Oh, oh yeah, gosh. that's that's horrifying. That's the first, yeah, the calls coming from in the house or something. It's like, oh, shit. I mean... Yeah, it's funny. That first sequence, it's like, I think when I think about that sequence, I think about the popcorn. That sticks out immensely, too. Right. And then oh, I yeah. think of this in Scary Movie when they do that as well. They can, that's the thing. Like, that movie <laughs> has to let, like, such, yeah. <laughs> you just it's be, like, you sort of forget which is which. Right, exactly. <laughs> but you love both equally, so, I'm, you know, it's just like, yeah, oh, yeah. both amazing. <laughs> yeah. oh, so speaking yeah. of us having reaction channels, one of the movies that I reacted to within, like, the last year was the newest Hellraiser. And I learned about <laughs> 30 minutes ago, David told me that apparently the, the house for the sorority house was it at that same house is that right any chance you did you guys notice that no it's, I, there was I something about it that to, looked familiar to me but i couldn't yeah. put my finger on what it was no i was thrilled like when we were in in serbia on pre-production they were wrapping up hellraiser um which i i really liked it i really i right. really like david bruckner um i think his um, I don't know if you've seen the night house. He did that before. Yep. One of my favorites, uh, the ritual. It's like, he's such a talented guy. Supposedly he's making the blob next, which Ooh. I'm like, oh. okay, I'm, wow. I don't know okay. if we need it, but like, I'm intrigued. Yeah. Uh, it, it, he's, he's such a talented guy. Um, so it was, I was, I felt I was very excited that they were like in the same city and we, fortunately got like a lot of their crew kind of came right from hellraiser onto our movie um and yeah like the sorority house is is where the majority of uh the new hellraiser takes place they they did i imagine like it was all cg but they did a big cg build on like around the exterior of the house so it kind of looks like it's like barricaded or something um right. where you know 
I, it also sort of showed me as a filmmaker, like, different budget levels because like we we walked into that house it's called the white palace like it was amazing it's basically like the prince of serbia lives there when when he's around oh, wow. <laughs> um, but they they rent it out for for film shoots and other things um and we you know we walk into that place and we look around and we're like this is amazing like the checkered floor the tall ceilings right. like we could hang a thing here and move a chair there and in um, Hellraiser, like they completely redid the space. So they basically walked in and were probably like, okay, this is good for us to build a set. Right, um, right. And that, I guess, you know, that's when you have a budget versus not having one. Right. You know, we kind of walked in, we we're like, okay, this will work for us. But it's, yeah, it's like, I think if you blink, you could kind of miss it. But if you, if you're looking for it, the exterior shots, like they, the shot that the exterior shot we have looking at the sorority house, like they have that same angle, same right. theirs is at night. Um, but they, yeah, they basically just have something, you know, kind of CG built around the space. Um, but yeah, same location. So strangely, those movies are now connected. Uh, and I, they also filmed um, the new, they filmed a couple sequences in glass onion in there as well like right before us i don't know what and i don't know what sequences because I, I i watched the movie and i didn't really right I didn't uh, really tell I there, mean, maybe... there was a lot of other rooms in the palace that we I... didn't film in so right i could picture maybe would it be like the kate hudson scene where she's like in her maybe. home probably because it has like a big mansion feel to it could but... be yeah right because like, everything I, else I... is like not I watched Glass yeah, Onion yeah. looking for it, and I was like, I have no idea. But they, right. like, there, was, there was a library in the palace that we didn't film in. Like, there were, so, I don't gotcha. know. But it's, yeah, it was kind of funny to think, like, oh, man, yeah, those three movies filmed, I think, in the same year. Uh, or maybe Glass Onion, went, Glass Onion might have been a year before us, but... right. Equally great films. They're all great. Oh, films. oh trust me. <laughs> I mean, oh. I'll still watch Slaughterhouse over all of them, but oh, man. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. haven't seen I've only seen Hellraiser once. Like I, I'd like to revisit it. I I was lucky I got to see it in the theater, so that was really cool. I'm a huge Hellraiser yeah. fan, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, now I want to Google and figure out all of the other things that were filmed. It, it reminds because like uh, I rewatched it again this morning and it was specifically the outside, like standing on the staircase, looking out. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this reminds me of something because it's the, the Hellraiser scene where you see. Oh, all yeah. Like yeah. So they they do that as. Yeah, that's right. And that's what I was like. Something is familiar about about this. And that's like so um, it reminds me of the mansion that they filmed both Halloween H2O in and Scream mm -hmm. 3. And it's like oh, yeah. one of those things, like we love like watching people react to those movies for the first time to see if they're going to pick up on it. Mm -hmm. um, and David and I, we went to California recently. We were going to all of these different filming locations oh, and we neat. got we got to go there. So that was really, really cool. Where, um, where else did you guys go? We um, went we did, like the majority Michael, of the Halloween. You see the Mike Myers? Yeah. The Mike oh, Myers. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We went to all of those. Yeah, And we also went to a lot of the cemeteries where a lot of um, oh, cool. famous yeah icons that we love like vampira we went to see because i love vampira where is she where's what was the name oh what was the name is of it the... hollywood forever hollywood forever, forever. Hollywood yeah. forever. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, do yeah. i don't i'm sure you guys have heard but they do like screenings like movie screenings there where you get to you sit in the cemetery and watch i mean they do from all over they do comedies they do they do everything right uh, right like i've seen oh man what i've seen um what have I seen there? Like Greece. I've seen Greece. I've seen Greece. like a Wes Anderson movie. I've seen like I don't even think I've seen a horror movie there, but like right. they, they do. I don't you guys, it's it's nor it's usually just summer, kind of maybe into the beginning of fall. But if you guys come back into town, definitely take a look. It's called uh Senespia. It's like Senespia. the the name of the the event. And they're fun because there's hundreds of people and you're oh sitting God in this little open area in the cemetery surrounded by famous gravestones watching great movies it's really great <laughs> i'm fairly certain i'll have to double check it afterwards but i'm fairly certain david you'll you'll remember this speaking of watching movies in the cemetery i'm fairly certain that that is the cemetery in the opening episode of american horror story hotel that gaga and matt bomer go and sit oh. 
at and they're watching Nosferatu. I'm fairly certain that's Hollywood. Well, that's Nosferatu. well, that's the that's the one where Sarah Paulson in Asylum, where she's walking out and she you see all the all the great all the stones. That's and she puts her glasses on and it's like that's that shot that she's that's from that cemetery actually. Oh, cool. I, yeah. I, I imagine they watch filmed their house. <laughs> <laughs> someday, man. I hope so. I mean, yeah, we got like we did a very limited theatrical, which you know you always it, for me. You know, it's hard to get a movie. It's hard to make a movie these days. It's hard to get your movie seen if it gets into a theater. Like, holy shit, that's amazing. Um, right. But uh, for me, it's like if the movie can be seen in any capacity, I'm I'm thrilled. So, um, yeah, if we get to do that someday, that would be that would be really cool. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, I, oh, even if they re-release it for theatrical limited theatrical yeah. run again, oh, I will be there. That would, that would be. Fun. It, I feel like that's the perfect movie to watch with an audience, where it's just like everybody's just like laughing having a good time and just just shooting the shit yeah. with like i think those, like yeah. almost most movies it's like it's there's so it's so much more enjoyable in in the theater setting oh, i don't yeah. know about you guys like i try to go like once a week or so because i'll sometimes leave a movie being like oh man like i'm so glad i saw it here if i watch this at home like probably oh, yeah. might have gotten distracted at some point and check right. your phone and it's like, yeah. So it, we were lucky. I, I was able to watch it with a crowd once, uh, and it was it was really fun because you Love get that. to kind of see the movie in a new way uh, with people around you. <laughs> yeah, there's. I'm trying to think. Think there, there's. I mean, w- with having like reaction channels, obviously a lot of them we hit, we watch at home because of course, we wanna, yeah. you know, first time watch it. But there's there's a couple that you know we generally we're like we're going to the theater to see it. I think for me, the biggest one that I'm very very thankful that I saw in theaters was Barbarian. Oh my goodness, yeah. Because hearing everybody I mean, else being like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> that cut to Justin Long is like iconic. It was so good. And I yeah, I went into that movie having no idea what we were about to watch. And I right. mean, it would, I'm sure at home it would have been great too, but it was like you know, kind of visceral to see it with with a crowd. Right. I'm, Sinister was that for me. Oh, where it was like, I never, I didn't see that in the theater. I that, that lawnmower one. scene, I have never seen like, uh, like visually just like everybody jump up and like, the, you just, amazing. Yeah. It, oh, that movie really just like shook everybody in that movie theater. It was like those scenes where shots were in the pool or in like burning car. Yeah. It was just like, everybody Isn't was just that, like, I think wild. like scientists have determined that's the scariest movie ever made or something. I like think that. so recently. Yeah. That has everybody's like yeah. the cart, like the, yeah. the race. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I well, get it. I the only jump scare that made it, me cry. Yeah, I cried. Which, which, the, the <laughs> a single tear one? came down. Yeah, because I just was not <laughs> just expecting too much. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess there are studies that, like, in the theater, like people's kind of heart rates, like, and heartbeat, like, uh, right, like, sort of, all are all in rhythm, Altered. and it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's like, that's amazing. Love it's that. like the only other oh. place that that happens is like church, maybe. <laughs> right. Uh, and yeah, right. so I yeah I didn't see Sinister in the theater. Uh, I luckily living in Los Angeles, they, we, you get, we get a lot of chances to see movies that, you know, maybe you didn't see when they first come out. Um, We have so many great theaters here that play, you know, older films and um, anniversary stuff. So I'll have to be on the lookout. I know in uh, the new Beverly, I think in, yeah, in February, uh, that's Quentin Tarantino's theater that shows only Mm -hmm. on film and it's, it's, a really wonderful theater if you guys or listeners ever are in los angeles it's like stop at the new beverly and watch a movie um this or february they're showing uh it follows like a midnight Ooh. midnight screening i think it's the 10 year anniversary does that sound right i believe uh, so yeah i want to say that was 2014 i've never seen that one in the theater so it's like damn i would love to go and get to experience that because that that movie rules <laughs> yeah i mean that score alone it, i mean he has yeah. to yeah, yeah I, I whenever i'm like working editing or writing or whatever like i'm i listen to that score <laughs> it's always it's always funny because like the the spotify year-end wrapped list or whatever i oh, yeah. like, what was your I number wonder, one <laughs> john carpenter john carpenter and people were like well it makes sense because you know your favorite movie is halloween i was like actually it was the fog score because when oh, I am editing, that is what I am listening to. So good. I have that on vinyl and I love throwing that oh. on. It's like, I love that score. Mine was the Oppenheimer soundtrack. <laughs> like people would think I'm a psycho if they saw this, <laughs> but I, um, I love that score. And it's like, 
it's just like especially if you're i don't know it's it's a really good one if you're like it's like a focused score so if you're editing or writing like i can't really have vocals or anything happening so i i like to listen to film scores and that one i don't know gives me like a a boost of energy but the fog fucking rules that that's like one of my favorites of his yeah i mean mine wasn't love it that one but in the the top (laughs) for the last couple years it's been on spotify has been the prom night soundtrack from 1980 because oh, cool. I, I love disco I've I'm never listened like, to, I haven't listened oh, to that oh it's just like it fits the movie so well because it's like yeah. it's disco just from beginning to end but it's so much fun it's just like gets me into like a, a good mood because it's yeah. just like so it's just disco so you just can't be sad when you listen <laughs> I love it I love yeah, it yeah so cool. no I oh, yeah I love film scores our uh, Sam Ewing he did our score and I I I really like what he did for Slaughterhouse I've like it's we also uh it's like on spotify and um we tried to like there's a couple couple moments in the score where we threw in like little audio moments from the movie um because i love that shit um (laughs) it doesn't really i don't know people don't seem to do that anymore but uh yeah like i I, I love his, his score yeah i feel like in the 90s maybe like that was a big thing like i know the pulp fiction score had like almost like full scenes um the mid samar score uh ari aster's movie they like they have i think a couple beats where like you have some some dialogue that leads into the score and um just as a listener like i i love that stuff yeah because now that Mm. i'm thinking about it i have um like on cd i have the 20th anniversary edition of the original halloween score and before each track they have like a little dialogue piece it's just like it's great even if it's a little slice of the movie, it's like, I know that I think the fog one has that, like, um, that opening sort of yeah around campfire the campfire thing. Yeah. yeah. It's like, Ooh, it's, it's so good. It really like sets the mood. Oh, I love it. Oh, random question that just popped into my head. The actress that plays Zenny, is that her real voice? <laughs> uh, she's just, like, like if you were to meet her on the street, no, what? Like, no, no, she, she, you know, she, that was like a a character choice. And I, Zenny is like a very unique character and like, it was very unique on the page and Bianca who plays Zenny, it was just like, she was really excited to try to, um, I don't know, just instill something into Zenny that separates her and, I know Bianca is like a huge Jim Carrey fan. So I know she was channeling some Jim Carrey when she was like trying to shape the character. And um, I, I, I know, you know, it might be a divisive character a little bit, but I, I, Bianca was great. And I, I thought she did a really fun job. Um, oh, oh she, don't worry she, with she, us. Cause non PC, that's where we, <laughs> okay. that's where we love yeah, no, I, I don't know. I feel like even though the character kind of feels maybe out of this world or something, it's like it, she feels to me so kind of committed to it and the characters around her, they're all playing, you know, the world of the movie is very real to them. So I, I, I think it works personally, but yeah, she's doing she's doing a bit of a voice. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, so Z- Zenny and Miss Mayflower were the the M- oh MVPs for me. Oh my god! Oh my god! Tiff Stevenson. Yeah, she's a, a stand up, and I don't know if you guys know, like the majority of the actresses, um, and Tyler, uh, who plays yeah uh, Andrew, who plays Tyler, are all from the UK. So they've all got like British accents, and um, like Miss Mayflower, she's got an accent uh emily uh played by lisa she's got an accent and i thought they all did a really good job Um, oh yeah but yeah tiff tiff stevenson who plays miss mayflower is like she's such a sweet she was just in los angeles a couple weeks ago and we caught up and she's she's awesome um yeah yeah she reminded me of that character (laughs) um oh 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 in sorority row like the house mother, uh, oh, Fisher. Um, like Terry Fisher, I like yeah, how yeah. always in like those types of movies, the house mother is always like a little bit drunk. Yeah, they're always <laughs> like, yeah, from like Black Christmas too. It's like there's always like, oh, a martini God. going on, and it, yeah, we tried to just like play into that. And she was like, uh, she, she was just like such a pleasure and like really funny and like s- super down. Like the the hardest thing um, is like making sure everybody's sort of like making the same movie. Like, cause right. everybody, you read it and everybody maybe have different 
have has different ideas as to like the tone and whatnot but i feel like i got really lucky where like a lot of the actors showed up and we all kind of got it like yeah like you know it, a lot of it was in brad's script and it was just like okay like we need to take the world of this movie seriously even though what's happening is super far-fetched and uh yeah i think I, I really like proud of a lot of the performances um, and yeah, Miss Mayflower for sure. Her little monologue. Towards it was the a saddest scene to watch. So, I was like, no, yeah, no. I, and that's that, you know, that was like, of course in these, you know, you don't have a ton of takes to do this stuff. And like, I, right. she like brought it and like, it was like, Oh damn, Tiff, I didn't know you could do that. Like, cause right. you know, it's like a dramatic scene and she, she killed it. Oh yeah. No, On top of maybe. yeah, needing to do an accent, it's like that stuff is hard. Um, but yeah, she was she did great. Oh, yeah, all of them did amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, and even the decisions made throughout the movie, I was like, oh, nobody's making like stupid like stupid decisions because sometimes you see you get upset. But every, everybody was like, there's a sloth following us. It's like, what the hell are we gonna do? Is like, so it was just like very fun to watch and just not be totally upset with all the characters yeah 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 i mean i think the big thing is sort of like where is where are all these girls going like why aren't we like why isn't anyone paying attention that girls are missing and like right, that, right, we, right. we we were hoping you know that was we were trying to play into just the you know uh obviously a big sort of element in the film other than you know kind of animal poaching and animal cruelty is this idea of like i i was really into the idea of like the your kind of digital world being more important than like face to face with people right. so it's like if you are succeeding on your cell phone then like whatever else is happening in your real life doesn't really matter because mm. this is going really well so that's yeah. sort of like weird clash between like i don't know i i know personally it's like i want to be off my cell phone more uh and like i find i focus more on that sometimes than like the people in my life so it's like yeah. put the phone down talk to people i get it there, pay I attention put my phone. if people are missing like you should oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> right i get it i put my phone on, on silent mode all the time just so i don't need outside stuff it's a distraction it really is a it's distraction, such a so distraction. I, get yeah. we, I think i don't know we live in a time where it's like everything's so immediate that it's like we need to respond every second every right and it's like you can no. give it yeah. a, a second and you know not a no. i don't know just like super add right i get it Trust me. <laughs> so one last question that I had was, um, were there anything, were there any scenes that you specifically would say like you were homaging another movie? Because like I, the thing that pops into my head is when she hits Alpha and he fly, or she flies out the window and then she's down there. But then all of a sudden you look again and she's gone. I was like, this is very Michael Myers. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, we tried to do that a, a lot throughout the movie. Funny enough, I've I've kind of read and saw people point things out that like I wasn't even aware of because I I think sometimes, especially I'm sure when you watch as many movies as I'm sure you guys do, it's like it's sort of baked in and you don't you may not realize that like oh yeah I'm completely ripping off uh, this this iconic movie, but you don't realize it because it just like feels right in the moment. That hundred percent is yeah um, Halloween um when alpha kind of breaks through the door you know the shining is my oh, favorite, right, right, right. Yeah. my <laughs> favorite movie in the world and that that is is a part of that um for sure um when alpha does like the little hand thing that to me uh i was really into like wwf wrestling when i was little Same. Uh, and i think the undertaker did that and that was yep. something i i was so scared of the undertaker so i wanted to <laughs> try to incorporate that um but oh man i there's probably so many others that like i kind of can't think of but you're 100 percent right with michael myers <laughs> i think what we uh david i think uh, if i remember correctly we said the the scene where alpha is driving the car and like oh. listening to music i was like that's orphan first kill <laughs> oh jeez like that's just what I, she like, does in that not, movie not Excellent. in my like probably not in my mind but now that you say it it's like oh yeah of course <laughs> yeah. another amazing movie <laughs> uh, yeah that was when did when did that come out like i wonder if we 2022 already... was it 2022 like, so we would have already have shot the movie that's crazy funny enough because yeah, uh, but with, that movie oh man i was like like i hope i are they making more of those yeah they're actually yeah. working, actually working <laughs> like, on hell them. yeah like those are so original and like 
so fun. I that was another the, movie theater experience that was like amazing to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, I watched those at home with my girlfriend, and but we were like, shoot, this is so much better than what we thought, and like it, it right. was so much fun. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah, are there any yeah, I don't... movies you guys have seen recently that you're excited about, like new or old? Well, I'm excited mm. for all. I again, I just love ridiculous. So I'm excited for all the Peter Pans and the Bambies mm-hmm. and all that. I just Mickey want, Mouse. I just need to. Uh, How Mickey many Mouse. of those I, have been announced? Is it? Well, is it? I, I think I only heard of the Peter Pan one. So Bambi's filming already. Um, Blood There's and Honey. Two Mickey two. Mouse. There's two Mickey Mouse. There's the Blood of uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey Part Two. That's filming, which. Or... That's intriguing, especially the first images I saw. I was like, okay. This is well, they're taking cool. this a darker, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the, and I think the first they got one was a little more budget, and it's oh, like, yeah. hell yeah, yeah. I'm, Everybody I'm was shitting on that movie, guy. but I was just like eating that movie up. I just did you see like, that one is... in the theater? No, I saw that one, I reacted to it, and yeah. it, I was just like, it's very easy for me to detach my brain, my thinking brain, because I just see everything at a surface level sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I was just like having so much fun. Everybody was like, you do know what you're watching, right? And I was like, yeah, and I'm having so much fun right now. <laughs> yeah, David always has to give me like a heads up, yeah, like I recently watched Frank and Hooker for the first time. I've and before I it. sat down, he's like, turn <sighs> the brain off. <laughs> it is so good. <laughs> Sometimes so that's, stu- yeah, it's like, I don't know. I've I've definitely been guilty of maybe judging a movie too harshly thinking, you know, and it's like not every movie needs to be, you know. An Ari Aster film. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's like <laughs> we were sort of saying that the, my a- the first AD and myself, like often we were like, we're not making the Irishman. Like, let's right. have fun and, you know, cer- you know, movies – can do wonderful things in terms of like progressive thoughts and political things. And just like, you know, they're important for It's a whole different spectrum of what films can do. And sometimes they can just like entertain and make you laugh and like, forget that, you know, the world might be kind of shitty and movies like Slother house. It's like, that's what we're hoping to do. So I didn't know they were, I didn't, I didn't know they were making a Bambi movie. So I'm, yeah, oh, I'm very just curious to see that how go. <laughs> that's going to look on the screen because that's just like wild to me how all these cartoons and beloved childhood characters are like now just are now gonna be slaughtering villains. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm up for it. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Oh, I think there's one called Alice in Terrorland. Oh, neat. Okay. Oh, I'm and it's so funny watching all of like, like uh, you know, on like film Twitter when they announce these new movies and people are like, will they just stop? This is ruining my childhood. And I'm like, a, you don't have to watch it. Don't watch it. But B, it, yeah. I'm right. like some like people like this stuff. Like we love this stuff. So oh, yeah, like yeah, you were yeah. saying, like sometimes it's it not not everything has to be serious. Not everything yeah. has to be progressive. Sometimes you just want to turn your brain off and relax and have a good time. Stupid is important. Yeah. Stupid is and, important. <laughs> and it's like if if one of those can kind of take off, it could maybe give that filmmaker a chance to like make something else. And it's like that as people that try to make movies it's like all you're trying to do is to be able to like make another one like right. so it's like i'm sure a lot of these folks it's like oh this is a chance to make something with no not you know characters that will hopefully get attention and you know can yeah. hopefully lead to you know more more work well as much as that as much as i don't ever want to see this movie again uh, like the terrifiers yeah. of the world you know <laughs> the, you know come to set, come part 2 and it's like huge but you know like making so much money and like having people being like flocking to the movie theaters to watch it and all that stuff like that's a testament to like how much people don't as much as you know again like the hereditaries of the world and that stuff are great yeah. sometimes people just want to watch somebody just get annihilated from stem to stern so yeah. it is just, yeah i don't care to watch it again but yeah listen I mean, people uh, it- it created some uh, talk. So. Yeah. And I mean, you know, there are those movies where it's like, can you can you get through this? Like, can you sit and watch Martyrs and Cannibal Holocaust? Like, I, I remember being mm. yeah, in high school and he, learning about Cannibal Hol- Holocaust and like a group of us sat down to watch. Them. There were like 14 of us like ready to go. And by the end, there were like two of us left because people were just like, nope, like, right. Can't do it. And it's the fact that they like, got sued. And yeah. uh, the story behind that movie is just so wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, and, and it's like, it's obviously incredibly problematic what they do. Uh, but like, it's, there's like really interesting stuff. And like the score is amazing. If you're looking for a score to listen yeah. to when you work, it's like strangely <laughs> like this incredibly beautiful score. And, you know, 
yeah it's like there's there's space for all of these oh yeah you know and like if you don't yeah as as you said like if you don't if it's gonna ruin your childhood don't watch it like maybe it's not for you (laughs) yeah i don't know if i could do cannibal holocaust because this one over here uh uh, was like two years ago he's like you want to watch a really nice christmas horror movie watch this movie called inside (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's when i stopped trusting people it is a christmas <laughs> movie I, it is a christmas never. movie technically it's a christmas movie technically yeah <laughs> oh no never again oh, i wait i was waiting for the ending to, to react to the ending of that movie because i remember watching the movie by myself in bed one night and i was like oh, whatever let me watch this french movie that i hear what i have never been so like it was like two in the morning and i couldn't go to sleep because like, it wasn't scary but it was just disgusting i don't think i've seen it like well Maybe like a date night with your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, I think I would, I imagine I would remember, like, wh- what's the premise? So it's basically about this woman who in the beginning of the movie is like a shot of her and her husband, and she's expecting a baby and the they have a car crash. She, the husband dies, but she survives and she's about to give birth. It's like Christmas Eve. And okay, a I've woman, never seen this. Oh, yeah, oh, oh. <laughs> and a woman comes knocking and because she, she wants to be alone for Christmas. It's her first Christmas without her husband. And this woman comes knocking at her door that she's never seen before. And so basically the woman is trying to get inside the house because she wants her baby no matter what. Oh, and, she'll, and she'll do, and she'll go, she, there's no limits to what she will do to get the baby. And it's so that French should give film. you, it's a French film. So that should give you an idea the French, of what man. the, oh, the French, I don't know. There should be laws or something because they, <laughs> I've never might have been so disturbed by watching a French horror film sometimes. Like is it's, it, have you seen, is it them or they? The, like I've the, seen that. Yeah, I don't that. think I have. I don't think I have. It's like this this couple. Yeah, he's like rolling his. It's so intense. It's like this couple. I don't. I kind of forget like the their occupations and whatnot. But they basically kind of go to this like remote home, and basically it's like these these people that these children like kind of oh. surround the home and and things go really bad and it's like oh, no. it's it's one of the things similar to like the michael meyer thing like why are you doing this and it's like right. like you were right. because you were home yeah, yeah. no but anyway <laughs> but yeah but yeah. No, the, yeah those movies like French that are like cool. shocking visually so if you ever want to watch something that'll yeah leave you a little bit disgusted you <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll add that i'm I, I know the title so it's like i bet it's on the list somewhere it's yeah. just there's Oh, too yeah. many movies they made the american remake don't watch that one. oh yeah watch the french yeah, yeah. watch the french sure. original. yeah <laughs> oh my well, god thank you for this was to talk about this was I had, wonderful. thank oh, you both god. so much you made our day you made our oh, day geez. just taking the time because <laughs> it really is like we had so much fun and this is just a movie that we watched we knew we were probably going to have a good time because just knowing our us but this is a movie that i genuinely was like we need to tell people about this movie because it's so much fun and people need fun right now you know so oh. thank you so much for making the movie like thank that. you thank guys you. so much no that that means a lot i mean yeah I, the the that was the goal of the movie is just like fun period like we want the experience to be something that you know yeah. is you, you leave like wanting to talk about it so that's that's really awesome to hear Oh, Alpha is just, yeah. <laughs> oh, like I've already thought about like a Halloween costume and I'm like, oh, so yeah. I'm gonna get, like a blonde wig with a martini. Amazing. Right. Smear some mascara and then I'm going to have get a stuffed animal of a sloth and just paint some blood on the nails. Perfect. <laughs> just, That's perfect. Oh, I'm so excited. I mean, I, I, I hope I'm not like overstepping things, but I, I know they're like, I think they're trying to find a way to make like a stuffed animal. Like yes, I I, I think it's I think it maybe is harder than it sounds, but I know they're like, you know, I hope I didn't give anything away, but I know that's like they're trying to, and it's like I want one of those. Uh, I I need candles, posters, like I, just, <laughs> I want a steel I need, book. Yeah. I want it all. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I hope yeah we have like the Blu-rays out and um, but yeah, it's like yeah I hope we get to do some like supplemental stuff like oh you know part of it is yeah hoping like enough people see it so people want those things <laughs> oh yeah no. oh, we'll be so harassing people don't worry. Worry. we'll yeah though. we'll be tweeting and so like just everything will just be like watch Wait, this did, <laughs> did you guys where, did you guys watch it on hulu or where do you guys we watched uh i actually bought it on prime i got oh, it on prime yeah, yeah thank yeah. you thank you oh yeah no, it's I, on hulu too if, if whoever is listening is has hulu it was part of like the huluween thing and I, that was exciting because a lot of people uh, I don't know if you guys are on Letterbox, but that's oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I I was kind of kind of watching as some of that stuff was happening, and uh, 
Hulu definitely helped. Like just, I think a lot of people were able to watch it because of that, which was cool. No, I was like, I need to own this movie. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah, so I, what, trust me, this will be one of those movies that's turned like whenever I'm feeling blue, whatever, just Slaughterhouse is going to go on. Like it's oh, just, man. yeah. <laughs> that's, so, that's so sweet. Thank you. Thank you so much. And ho- thank you so much. And hopefully we can come back for part two. If, oh, yeah. You know, if that ever happens, we'll be happy to I have you back. <laughs> keep you in the loop. Once I please. know something, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> oh, please. Thank you so much. Cool. Thank you. Thank you both. <laughs> well, have a yeah, great I day. Can... <laughs> have a great day. Thank you for coming. Um, oh, the horror Hour viewers. Well, you're already here, so you know we're fine. <laughs> <So>. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, Slaughterhouse, it, it, you can buy it on Prime, Hulu, Ooh. all the places. And... Watch it because it will change your life. Yes. <laughs> Just yeah. fun, fun, fun. Oh. Uh, Thanks, um, until next time, guys. Bye. Bye. We all go a little mad. Oh, you are the Hello.